This is Bloomberg Markets. I'm John Ehrlichman. The CEO of ChatGPT's parent company is acknowledging the need for more regulatory oversight in artificial intelligence. Sam Altman, the CEO of OpenAI, telling senators in Washington today his greatest fear is AI ends up causing significant harm to the world. Altman had shared a similar message about the potential peril speaking at a business event in Toronto yesterday, but he also highlighted the promise. And we are seeing that promise in Canada as well. BC-based Sanctuary AI just released a general purpose robot that uses artificial intelligence to simulate human-like intelligence. The company has several investors, including a unit of BC, the parent company of this network. Jordy Rose is Sanctuary CEO, and he joins us from Vancouver. Jordy, welcome back. It's nice to have you with us again. Why don't you update us uh, since we last spoke to you on, on this latest development that you've been working on? Today is a very exciting day for Sanctuary, for our customers, and for Canadian innovation. Today we announced Phoenix, a humanoid general purpose robot powered by our Carbon AI system and designed for work. We also announced Carbon itself, an AI system that's designed to allow the robot to think and act in the world like a person. And we're, um, we're aiming this technology towards solving uh, labor challenges uh, with our customers and others. Are there any potential real-world scenarios that uh, you might be able to share with our audience so they can envision how this might end up being used? Uh, the initial use cases are in retail with customers like Canadian Tire, where the robots do a variety of different kinds of tasks. Uh, everything from back-of-house things like uh, depalletizing trucks to front-of-house things like operating uh, point-of-sales terminals. The idea is to be able to build a technology that's able to do the sorts of things you'd expect a person to do, both physically and cognitively. And we talked last time about some of the um, initial feedback you were getting from, from potential customers uh, and organizations uh, like Canadian Tire. Walk us through what that process has been like, maybe update us. Uh, you know, at a time when I think a lot of people are trying to figure out um, uh, what the workforce of the future looks like, you know, is that, um, is, that, is that something that also has complications? Well, there is no doubt that, that most organizations today are facing labor shortages, and those labor shortages will get worse. A lot of the jobs that are very difficult to fill um, in our experience um, are low-paying jobs that, that people don't want to do, or when they start doing them, they leave. So there's been a, 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 a response that's been very positive from the folks that we're dealing with that the uh, this technology's time has come and automating labor is a good thing. Um, so the response has been quite positive so far. And we, uh, it, it is amazing to see um, uh, some of this uh, intelligence uh, in combination with uh, with an actual robot, I think a lot of we were talking about chat GPT, a lot of people are are getting used to that eye of just interacting with their phone in a new way uh, and the answers or, or ideas that they get through that process. Um, what was the biggest challenge for you in, in getting to a point where you could you could combine these two things in a powerful way? Well, things like chat GPT are not designed to be intelligences of the human sort. They don't control a robot. Our brain is an organ that evolved to control our body and its movement. So there's they're only peripherally related to the problem that we've solved, which is how do you build a system that's truly human-like in the way that it understands the world, moves through it, and then affects it. The progress that others have been having on building pieces of this puzzle has been extraordinary, and I would say accelerating exponentially. But the thing that we've done is combine them all in a novel and unique way. This is an example of another case where Canadian innovation is leading the world. Uh, the sorts of things that we're doing are unique and uh, combine some of those techniques from OpenAI and others but the sum total of them is much greater than any of those particular contributions. Well, and I'm, I'm glad you brought up the Canadian component because obviously we're, uh, to your earlier point, um, trying to figure out questions about labor force issues. We're, we're trying to think about uh, where Canada's uh, AI industry fits into the, the, the global conversation. Uh, but I also referenced the fact that you have um, testimony in Washington, um, uh, the head of OpenAI talking about uh, the need for regulation as well. 
well, at least from the Canadian perspective, what kind of conversation are you involved in? What would you like to see as we're all trying to sort of be on the same page on, on what is the right regulatory framework for this kind of technology? Well, there's no doubt that this kind of conversation needs to be had uh, broadly with policymakers. Um, so we're going to be involved in that discussion. I think that the, the technology that we're building is of a different nature than the sort that OpenAI and others build in that the effects of it are very obvious because you're looking at it. The robot itself is doing things like doing work, for example, uh, whereas those other technologies, not so obvious sometimes what they're, what they're doing. So yes, there will need to be regulatory frameworks put in place. Uh, we'll be an active participant in those discussions when it's appropriate. Um, and I'm looking forward to that. Okay, and just to, just to give us a sense on, on, on your roadmap from here, so a big development for you. Uh, what's next? What, what should we be thinking about with Sanctuary? More robots doing more work in more places.